Hello, everyone. God bless you all. Thank you for tuning in. We have a saying here at the Wayworld Outreach that once you watch once, you're now part of the family. So let's get ready for a powerful, God-filled service family. Welcome back, WayFam. I am so glad that you are tuning in. My name is Vanessa. And I'm John. And like I said, thank you for tuning in this Sunday morning. Pastor has an incredible word prepared for us, so get ready. Watch party host, you already know what time it is. Go ahead and check in. Drop your watch party number in the comments. Let us know that you're watching. Um, John, how's your morning going? Oh, my morning is going fantastic. It's always good. How's your morning going? <laughs> it's going great. I was already praised. Praising God and worshiping Him on the way here. I was tuning in on WayFam um, at the 9 a.m. service. Yes. So, so super, super good. I'm well, I was actually in the 9 a.m. service, and I, I can tell you, family, you're in for a treat. Today is a powerful word. You are definitely going to be hearing from God today. Yes, and so, WayFam, you probably already know. Some of you are probably actually counting down the days, but we are going on week two of our fast and Personally, it has been incredible. John, how are yes, you doing with yes, your fast? Yes, yes, yes. I'm actually doing a lot better with my fast. I can tell you, I think it's just that initial, that first week yes. when your body's getting adjusted, it's a little bit challenging, but now it's not so challenging. I, I feel like I'm doing really good, but most importantly, I'm hearing a lot more right. from God, and I'm I'm doing a lot more listening and tuning in and responding, and that's what this fast is about, right, right Vanessa? Exactly, and I love that you mentioned that because I ask a lot of people, hey, how is your fast going? Some of them are like, it's going great, I'm not having a problem eating, or some are like, I struggled, I messed up, yeah. but when I ask that question, I'm more so asking like, what is God speaking to you? Because like you said, that's exactly what this fast is about. It's about tuning in from God, tuning in to God, hearing what he says, getting a download, getting a word from him. And so WayFam, if you're struggling with the fast yeah. or maybe you had a little slip up, don't even worry about that. God's not condemning you for, for a slip up. So just keep right on going, seek his face and, and tune in to him. And, really. and Vanessa, I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said that word, seek. Family, you have to make sure that you're looking for God in right. everything, in everyday life, everyday readings, everyday interaction, because God is always communicating with us. He's communicating with us in every way right. possible, but we have to be making sure that we're seeking Him, and right. that's what's most important right now in this fast. And if you haven't already started, start today. We yes. started January 6th, and we're going all the way to January 26th. It's definitely a great way to lay the foundation and start your year off right. So it is not too late to get started in this fast and hear from God. Yes, and I encourage you, grab an accountability partner if you need one I have my p12 girls they've really been my accountability yeah. every morning we are um, putting on devotionals on YouTube so you can use that as you're just to get your day started really so we encourage you go on to YouTube check out the devotionals they have been incredible they're all from our leadership and every day there's just a fresh work fresh impartation of what God's speaking and so if you maybe don't know where to start or how to start seeking the Lord start with that go to YouTube check out the daily devotionals and start there but John right now we actually have yes, a video we, um, we, we talk about this the, the past couple weeks pastor has given us instruction on how to really prepare for 2021 so go ahead and take a look at this video and we'll be right back prepare for those ahead of time so we have like you've seen the fast we have impartation which we're going to talk about in just a second i'm super excited for that we have setting goals we have doing something new and we have the first fruit offering but yes. i want to kind of sit there on doing something new john 
yesterday I had the um, the opportunity to participate in Adopt a Blocks. They're doing a new oh, launch. Yeah. It was powerful and the cool thing way fam pastor talked about this last sunday they didn't just do a new launch here in san bernardino but they started adopt a block in pomona and it's really for the vision is reaching one reaching one family and so if you um want to get involved in that i definitely encourage you here in san bernardino it's every yeah. saturday at 9 a.m and um it, it's good there there's so much the vision that was casted i'm excited about i'm it. definitely excited about it right. as well vanessa i can tell you right now that's where the heart of our church right. is getting out on the streets and reaching souls um, we family this is our vision this is our vision for the church reaching the inner city so you right. definitely want to make sure that if God is leading you to to do that and be a part of that ministry definitely come out and serve and adopt the block it is powerful this is where the heart of our church is right. and it's also where the heart of God is right. which is most important and I'm just glad at, that as a church we are so in tune uh, and in line with God that we are going to carry out his will in the inner city and that's where we need to be family yes. so make sure pray about it especially in this time of fasting this is the the, the most um, impactful time where you can hear from god and what he wants to do in your life so make sure you guys are being intentional it's about being intentional right. and that's what we're doing in this fast and that's what we're going to be doing in our impartation services yes. starting january 27th through january 31st i'm ready for it are you ready Vanessa? yes i'm super excited because we have an incredible lineup of course we have our very own pastor marco i'm excited to hear him he always comes with just like an extra fire an extra yes. anointing i know he really tunes into the holy spirit to hear what he should be speaking so um impartation we have pastor marco we have pastor i mean we have dr dave martin he He's hilarious, honestly. He, if you're sitting and and you come and you hear his word, you're gonna laugh, guaranteed. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we have Bishop Dale Bronner. I, when I think of Bishop Dale, I just think of excellence. He's so he communicates so well, um, and and he, again, powerful man of God. And then I, this just in, I just seen was we have Obed Martinez. But go ahead, actually, I'm over here talking so much about impartation. That's because you're excited. It's okay. <laughs> I, I'm not mad at you. I'm, I'm super not mad. excited. But we actually have a clip so that way you can just get a little sneak peek of what to expect during impartation so go ahead and take a look at this video and we'll be right back He goes, allow me to purify you. What he's saying is, I know you're not perfect and I know you need work, but let's not act like you don't need work. Let's fast for personal change. I will change you. I will make you everything I've created you to be, but be ready to change. It's time for us to say we're done living the way we've been living. That's just a security blanket. I want the real anointing on me. God will sustain you supernaturally through it and when you come out on the other side you won't look like what you've been through people will look at you you'll be telling that testimony and they'll say girl not you man not you I know you didn't go through this but God will make it to where you don't look like what you've been through to be where you are and to have what you have because at the end of the day we're Holy Ghost filled we're filled with power, we're filled with faith, and this is not the time for the church to back up, but time for the church to rise up in Jesus' name. This is the time for the intercessors to rise up. This is the time for the worshipers to rise up. This is the time for the church to get out of the closet and come to the forefront, because we got the answer, and his name is Jesus. In the world, you're going to have some trials and tribulation. But I love what it says right after that. It says, but be of good cheer. cheer. You mean, you mean he, he wants me to have a good attitude in the middle of my negative situations? That, that's what he said. He said, right in the middle of all the trials and tribulations and all the things you go through, you could still be of good cheer. Welcome back, everyone. That was a sneak peek at our impartation services. Make sure you show up because you are definitely going to get fed. We're going to be wrapping up our, our, our 21 day fast on January 26th, and then we're going to go right into impartation on January 27th. So not only are a lot of you out there going to be physically hungry, but you're going to be spiritually <laughs> hungry. So come January 27th through the 31st and get fed because I know you hungry. Not, not hungry with a U, but hungry with a O. That's Southern terminology. I'm from New Orleans, so that's how we say things. Hungry with an O. So come down here January 27th through the 31st and get 
fed. You're definitely not going to want to miss out on what God is going to do during impartation service. And I love that little joke. You said you're not only going to be physically hungry, but spiritually Oh, hungry. you're going to be hungry. And so definitely come. If you leave out of impartation um, feeling like you didn't receive anything from God, I just want to say... It's your it's fault. Your own fault. <laughs> it's your to, fault. I'm trying to be I'm, nice. It's your own fault. I'm going to say it for you, Vanessa. <laughs> it's your own fault. And that's with a lot of different things in our life, different situations that we end up in. It's our own fault. It's not God's fault right. that you're not growing. It's not God's fault that you're not getting his word. It's not right. God's fault that you're not going to show up to impartation and get blessed. It's your own fault. Right. So make sure you show up and receive what God has for you. Yes. And so it's not enough just to expect growth. I can't come into this year and say, you know what? I'm going to grow and it's just going to happen. You have to be proactive. And so yes. I encourage you, Latham, be proactive. Show up to impartation services. If you're tuning online, they're going to be online and they're going to be live. So we definitely encourage you with that. John, there's actually something really exciting yes. happening today. We okay. have you, Latham, you can't see, but we have a group of students down here. Well, not students, but um, disciples. So I guess That's students. That's right. Many women of God right here. Yes. They're lined up down the hallway. But John, what are they lined up for? What's they happening? are lined up for baptism. We have 28 people that are getting wow. baptized today. And I'm excited about it because one of the people is actually my dad. Yes. My dad is getting baptized today, and that is just such a blessing. I'm, I'm just glad to see what God is doing in my life and in my family's life, so I'm just excited about it. I'm, I'm excited for them to be starting their journey in their new life, in their yes. new identity with Christ. It's phenomenal. Amen, amen. I love that. And a big part of that, I know a lot of these students... Actually, I believe all of these students have participated in the growth track. Yes. And so when we talk about growth track, some of you may not be familiar with that, but here at the Wayworld Outreach, we offer discipleship courses. We call them, our culture here is our growth track process. And so we have starting at the way, we have prospering at the way, we have freedom at the way. And what these classes really do is they equip you to carry out and walk out the life that God has called you to walk out. I think sometimes it could be intimidating, especially yeah, if definitely. you're just, um, you just said yes to Christ, you're like, well, what now like I have all these habits I have this way of doing life but how do I do it serving Christ and so these classes will really equip you and empower you to live out I want to say your best life for Jesus and then who knows wait fam if you haven't been baptized this may be, be you in the the weeks to come and so I definitely encourage you but go ahead and take a look at this video to see what you can um, possibly participate in Robert here at the Way World Outreach. First of all, I want to wish everybody a happy, happy new year. Well, we're getting ready for some exciting things I want to let you know about. Starting at the Way classes is starting this upcoming week. Myself, I will be teaching Sunday, January 10th at the 9 o'clock class. This is the only time throughout the whole year that me and Pastor Marco are going into the classes and teaching them so you don't want to miss it. Next Sunday, January 10th at 9 a.m. And then Pastor Marco will be teaching Tuesdays at 7 here at the Hallmark Campus. So you get to see Pastor Marco in a class only time all year long. My dad always told me this, how you start, Robert, is how you finish. If you've never taken discipleship class here, maybe you're saying, man, I want to get involved. This is where you start, starting at the way. Sunday, January 10th, 9 a.m., I will be teaching a class, Pastor Marco, on Tuesday, January 12th at 7. We love you guys. Come join us, starting at the way. Let's find purpose in our lives. Welcome back, Way Fam. That was a sneak peek at our growth track. Don't wait, get involved. Vanessa was saying sometimes when you, you start off as, in, as being a Christian, you're like, what next? What's next is you get moving. Yes. God blesses you as you're in motion, not as you're standing still or being stagnant. You have to make sure that you're moving so God continue to work with you to get you in the place that he has called you to be in. You're preaching so now, John. family, <laughs> we have something for everybody though. We have something for adults, growth track, and we also have something for kids, and that's Kids World. Check out this quick promo of Kids World. Welcome back, Way Family. That was Kids World. Make sure you check them out on kidsworldkids.com. I don't know about you, Vanessa, but I'm glad we have something for kids to continue to grow in their journey to become like Christ. Yes, yes. And this, parents, it's not just for the kids. There's some um, parent just encouragement on there. So go to kidsworldkids.com 
www.thelifeofmyfamilyfitness.com. Tune in so you can get activities for your children, encouragement for yourself. And, and like you said, John, I love that we're not forgetting about the kids. We're oh, we shouldn't forget about them. They, they are important. They're yes, instrumental in doing are. what God has called them to do. But right now, family, we're getting ready for a powerful service and some praise and worship. We're going to send you inside. We'll see you after. This is my
God. How many know he's famous for being a way maker, a miracle worker, promise keeper, provider, healer. The list goes on and on and on. Hallelujah. Come on, if you are here to worship today, do you mind lifting your hands in his presence? Hallelujah. Oh, we welcome you in this place. You're here, oh God. You've been here, oh God. Oh, come on, just worship him. Tell him how awesome he is. We lift you in this place. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, oh, you are here, moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you, you are here, working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, do you believe that? You are here, moving in our midst, I worship you. I worship you, you are here, moving in this place, right now, we worship you, I worship you.
promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Let's declare together, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, let's sing out. You are here turning lives around. Turning lives around, I worship you. I worship you. You are here mending. You are here mending every heart. I worship. Anybody know he's a heart mender? I worship you.
Welcome to the Wayworld Outreach. We are so glad that you're with us today. We have a saying here at our church that's when you come once or watch once for the first time, you are now part of our family. Would you guys take a moment and just wave at our online community? Wave everybody. Come on, wave. Come on, come on, come on. We've got thousands of people tuning in online. Watch party hosts. This is a perfect time to check in your watch party. But you guys can be seated here in the main auditorium. We're so glad you're with us. And we want to take a moment to recognize some of our first time guests. If I could have the house lights up just a bit so I could maybe see some of these folks. But we want to welcome you. We are so glad that you're here. We have Anna from Highland. Her daughter Alvira invited her. We have Martha Hernandez. Ivan and Paula from Riverside, Roslyn from Colton, Laura from Fontana came in to see her daughter get baptized, which you guys come on up here. These are 28 different people who got baptized today. Come on up, guys. Come on up. Come on up. Stand right here in the center. And we have one more uh, first-time guest. That's Malia. She's a guest to one of our members, April. Would you give it up for our first-time guest? We are so glad you guys are with us. And you can also give it up for these wonderful people. These are all folks who got baptized today, dedicated their life publicly to Christ. So we're going to hear from them in just a minute. And uh, actually, I'm going to turn it over to you guys right now. This is Christine, the leader of our discipleship. Welcome, Christine, Hello. as she shares a testimony with you Good morning, Wayward Outreach family and everyone watching online. Good morning. Well, let's give these students a hand, you guys. We had 44 people get baptized this morning through our Starting at the Way Discipleship Growth Track. Give them a hand, you guys. You know, each and every one of them here has a story. And every one of them have been impacted by the love and the power of God. And they have made a decision to completely surrender and submit their life to Jesus Christ. And there actually is a family in particular. If I could have Monica and your family come on over. Monica, the Garcias. Come on, come on, come on. This is actually a, an entire family, you guys. A, bro, uh, a sister and her brothers and their wives and her boyfriend, they all decided to get baptized um, through our Starting at the Way Discipleship Growth Track. So I want to introduce Monica here. Introduce your family to us really quick. So here I have uh, my brother, Jose, and then I have my brother, Victor. And this is their wives, uh, Kiana and Vanessa, and this is my boyfriend, David. You know what, they um, committed to taking our Starting at the Way classes um, this year and they also found out as a family that they all decided to get water baptized. They all responded in faith to the salvation and baptism class, not knowing what the other person was doing. They discovered after that they all signed up to be water baptized. So praise the Lord. What has God been doing in your life and in your family these last few weeks? So uh, this past December, we actually started attending at The Way. Uh, we came through my brother, Victor and Vanessa, who have been here, uh, members. And uh, my parents also started coming at The Way as, along with my younger brother. And when we started, I think we came the third service of December. And as a unit, you know, Pastor Marco was talking about fasting. And I was so excited because my dad finally decided to come to church. <laughs> And as a unit, we all decided to start the fast, even my dad. And that was just so impactful to me to know that a man who's resisted to come to church decided to come and he felt the love and he felt God's love pour out here. And I know that was the Holy Spirit and God speaking through him. You shared a little bit with me about when you guys um, decided to take Starting at the Way and what, what you experienced in taking that class. What has God done in your life from taking that class and what did you learn? Yeah, so I'm taking the 9 a.m. class with Pastor Robert and I've learned so much. I, I used to go to a small Pentecostal church and I didn't realize how simple it is. You know, sometimes things can be so complex and it's not, it's following Jesus and being more like him. And Jesus got baptized, I wanna be baptized. Like that was one of the things I, he emphasized. And I wanna walk the walk that Jesus walked and make disciples. And it's just the joy and the love. It's a, it's a new year, it's new love for God. And just, we're all committed to him. And I'm, I'm just so excited to see that in our family. Thank you for sharing. Let's give them a hand, you guys. 
congratulations to all of our students that got baptized. We're so proud of you. The best is yet to come. God has great things in store for you. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to get water baptized, you can actually sign up on the Wayworld Outreach app. Just click the connect banner. And then from there, you can click sign up to be water baptized. And what we will do is we'll direct you actually to our starting at the way class. Um, right now we're on class two. It's not too late for you guys to jump in this Tuesday. Starting at the way class, Pastor Marco will be teaching. You will actually learn what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Jesus Christ. So come on out this Tuesday, 7 o'clock, but you can sign up on the Wayworld Outreach app for starting at the way and to be water baptized. God bless you guys. Congratulations, everyone. You can turn your attention to the screens. Thank you. One of the major problems I always came across was um, why why can't we get our clients like jobs, not, not just jobs, but also pay a minimum wage. And it was in that moment where God just filled me with vision and this business plan was birthed. We wanted to help um, individuals with development of disabilities get employment. And not only employment, but get prepared through education and um, you know, also be valued you know, in, in order to be able to find their purpose. I'm just grateful that now we're in a position to offer the opportunity to them. You could clearly see it in the clients. Yeah. You could sure. see their growth, especially one that I have he was so shy, he didn't want to taste anything, he didn't like to talk, like, now he's social. He talks so much, I call him the boss. So he's, it's amazing to see them transform. I'm just glad that God brought me to this company. He brought me here for a reason, and not only is it changing me, like, they help me just as much as I help them. I'm thankful for our CCI gave me this opportunity to become strong and independent. It's it been working good, I like it. It's calm, it's easy. I just believe in God, like He believed me that I could do better in life. I just want to say to um, CCI that I'm happy that I got this job, that and I've become a good person better, independent. I'm just, I'm glad to be with Jesus and stuff, yeah. It's awesome. My name is Wesley Felix. What my disability is, I have CP. It affects the motor skills of my legs. I've been working here for five months. Eric is my uh, community trainer for a class. We work together as a great team. He's doing an awesome job. It's not just, you're not just working like a regular job. You're helping people, you're loving them and meeting their needs. And that's one of the biggest things that our church just talks about. And that's one of the biggest things God talks to us about to do, so. What CCI is trying to do is trying to get people with disabilities out there and working. Because I had a long road before I found this place. I felt like I wasn't able to work because of my disability. And I didn't have a purpose. This gives me purpose. If it weren't for them, I would still be sitting at home. So I want to thank Sam, Christina, and all of the job coach, even though I've only met two of them. <laughs> so keep it up, guys, and you'll do really, really well. And to the clients out there, don't give up because there's always obstacles in your way that you will overcome. Welcome everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to one of our services here at the Way World Outreach. My name is Pastor Robert. My name is Mike Kill. What a great testimony we just heard so about cool. Samuel started a new business to yeah. staff those that are disabled and Wesley now is in training. What a great testimony. I mean, it's so cool, Pastor Rob. You know, Wesley said now that he's in training to actually get a job. Now, he, he could not get a job before no. because, of, because of his disability. And so now, you know what he said, Pastor Rob? Yeah. I feel like I have purpose now. Man, that's wonderful. And that's how the church got started. Pastor Mark has always said this, let's find needs and meet them. Yeah. And I got to give a shout out to Samuel starting a new business. Wow. It's not always easy to start something new. So Samuel, shout out to you for hearing God's voice and started this new staff and agency. Yes. Thank you so much. Well, let's get ready to give to the Lord today and continue seeing the work of God. There's a few ways how you can give. Right now you can get out your phones or your tablets. The first way, go to the app and click on the give banner. 
That's right. The second way is the way dot gives. You can go to any web browser on your mobile device or computer, type in the way dot gives and a safe and secure way will come up that you can give. Yeah, and the third way you can still come in person either at the Hallmark Campus or Arrowhead, Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. We'd love to see you come on down. You can still give your offering in person. And if you're in service right now as well, we have some giving drop boxes. When the worship team yeah. sings this last song, you can get up, make your way to the giving drop boxes, and you can give that way as well. Right. But Michael, I can't forget, at the end of the month, we're bringing in our first fruit offerings. Yes. Man, I'm so excited by that. Here's a great scripture for first fruit, Nehemiah 10, 35. We promise to bring the first part, the first part of every harvest to the Lord's temple year after year. This is something we do yearly at the beginning of the month. We'll be bringing it in January 31st. First fruit, what is that? That's the best of the first. It might be your first paycheck. Might be your first 300. And also, a really easy way or a good example, we started something called the 365. You yeah. want to explain that, Michael? I do. Uh, 365, there's 365 days in a year. So what we're saying, Pastor Rob, yes. is that we'll sow a seed, a dollar, for every day of the year. Man, I love it. Let's expect the harvest for 2021. So again, get your envelope. You can flag down an usher. You could go online as well on the app. There's a tab right. too. But let's get ready to bring our first food offerings on January 31st, the end of impartation. Yeah. We love you guys. As the worship team is singing right now, let's use this time to give. God bless you guys. God bless. The king of my heart Be the mountain where I run The fountain I drink from Oh, he is my song Let the king of my heart Be the shadow where I hide The ransom for my life Oh, he is my song everyone online and in person you know this song kind of just slows everything down and gets us to focus on what's good in our life and God is good he's forgiven us he loves us he set us free and when everybody else walks out on us doesn't believe in us he sure does 
He loves us. He has a plan for us. He doesn't give up on us. The Bible says that while we were yet sinners, that we were in our worst condition, Christ died for us. God showed his love for us. You know why he did that? So you would never, ever think that any wrong that you've done would ever stop God from loving you. I've heard people say, hey, I'm not going to church. If I go to church, you know all the wrong I've done. And if I go in there, the walls are just going to cave in. And I would say this to you. God's love and his goodness is way stronger than your mess and your failures and your mistakes. See, it's real. You know, back, back in the day in church, we used to sing a song, count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. And I, I think that song is more relevant today than it ever has been because we're being bombarded with so much bad news and hurt and pain, betrayal, abuse, hurt. And it's so easy for us to focus on our losses, our failures, society, pain, division, unforgiveness. And if we're focused on that, we are trapped. But we come today and we sing a song. No, God, you're good. You're good. Matter of fact, I want to just do one, one quick round of that song, just one. And I want you to just focus on how good God has been to you. And if you're in this place to say, you know, I, I don't know God, that's okay. Because today I, I pray that we can do a proper job introducing you to a God that absolutely loves you and has a plan for your life. He's not against you, he's for you. Let's sing this one more time. Let's give the Lord a hand. He is good. Lisa, come on up here. You know, he's good no matter what. And I, and I think one of, the wor one of the greatest things that we face that cause most pain is a loss of a loved one. You know, and, and we've seen, you know, this last week, we've had some members pass away. And, and there's a lot of loss and missing and all that. But but I just want to just remind you that you as a believer, when a believer dies, this is what happens. They're alive. They're in heaven. We'll see them again. And the Bible says that death loses its sting. It, it hurts, but it loses its master sting. That means we're not going to be separated forever. We'll see our loved ones again. That's why Jesus died and resurrected from the dead to give us life and give us eternal life. And every single one of us can receive that. Isn't that good news that we can see our loved ones again? You know, so even then, this is my beautiful wife, Lisa. And Hello. 
you know what I liked? I liked the way you, you like? sang that in Spanish. In Espanol? Yeah, that was good. Gusta? Yeah, me, gust like me gustó. All I right. loved it. Yeah. You know, um, you know, it's funny because, um, you know, she, she's learned Spanish. When we, fir when we first met, I was asked, what nationality are you? And she had her, like, her spiel. And, and <laughs> no, because it ended up being a spiel. Well, you, have to, you have to explain, because I was adopted. Yeah, she so was adopted. I was told these things. Yeah, so she was adopted. She's never met her biological parents. So I'd ask her, what are you? And she goes, well, I'm French, Italian, um, Cherokee, Indian. And what else was it? I thought it was those three. It was those three. So and I go, oh, okay, cool, you know. So we did um, the ancestry.com thing, you know, so we could find out who she really is. <laughs> I go, so we were like excited to find out so I go man French you know and I, the truth was I was hoping she was like Cherokee and then she was part of some tribe and we could get like 30,000 a month or something like that back pay or something like that for you Lord for you Lord that I'm serious good. that sounds good <laughs> some tribe or something hoping man. But it all came back, and when it came back, we found out she was 97% European, British, really. So we just found out she was white. Interesting. <laughs> it was real simple. She's white. <laughs> See. Yep, I'm uh, yeah, so we love but you. But you know, honey. today yeah. you're going to be talking about goals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Si, si alguien quiere aprender anything in the world, si se puedes. Si se puede. Because I wanted to learn Spanish. And I'm not fluent, but me gusta hablar en español. Me gusta cantar. Me encanta cantar en español. I love that. That's very good. Go, white girl. Go, white girl. Go. Go, white girl. <laughs> uh, awesome. You know, we, we, we're crazy. It's your first time here. We don't apologize. This is the way it always is. <laughs> you know, but... Um, you know, we, we want, today we're talking about goals, and she just mentioned something. She set a goal to learn Spanish, and, and she's pretty good at it. She actually understands Spanish in a conversation. Sí, yo entiendo mucho. See, sí, there you go. She's even practicing right now. She, she, I remember that we, um, we started a Spanish ministry here at the church, and we had no worship leader, and she was leading our Spanish worship ministry. And it all started with just a goal, a desire, a vision. And there's nothing impossible. You know, we've seen this business that was started here at the church. And, and some might be wondering that, that building across the street is our education center. And out of that education center, is, this business is being run where we're taking care of, of the disabled, giving them honor, giving them purpose. And I thank God for what we're doing there. And it all started with someone getting a vision. I want to help a disenfranchised group of people that can't get a job. And if they do get something, they don't even get paid for it. To give them some dignity, give them a job. And so now with that vision, with that goal, God says, we'll partner up. And Cityway, which is our group over there that has our job, um, we have job placement, we have staffing, we have, now we have, you know, this business over there. We have, we're training right now. We're ready to launch out a construction school. Um, we're, we're just doing a lot of stuff over there. We have a leadership university over there, counseling over there. It's just a lot of things happening in that building over there. And, but it all started with a dream and a vision. And now everyone, there are people coming in that otherwise would never get jobs. And they're getting jobs now. And they're loving life. And they have a lot to give us. And we're so grateful that you said yes to the vision. You and your wife said yes to a vision and started working it. So today, that's what we're going to talk about. Does God have vision or a plan for your life? Because if you don't know what that is, you're going to walk around in life aimlessly or waiting for someone to define you. And if you just wait for someone to define you, they might have a really bad definition of who they think you are in their life. And they'll abuse you, they'll hurt you, they'll use you, they'll trap you, they won't value you. So this is what we're here to do, is realize God has a plan for every one of us. You're not a mistake or an accident. And maybe you've been going through life 
I wonder what life is about. I see pain, 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 pain. And God says, your life was not to be a be meant to be a punching bag, be abused. You are not meant to live an addicted life. You are meant to live a purpose, live free, and, and empower other people. We're going to start today. So I want to pray, and we're going to get into the word today about accomplishing a vision. I, I named it today, Vision Accomplished. And God has a vision for your life. And I pray by the time you're done with this life, even this year, God would give you vision, and by the end of the year, you could say, vision or mission accomplished. And we stand before God. He says, well done, vision accomplished. Lisa, lead us in prayer, please. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for each one that is here, those that are watching. I thank you, God, that you would bless us, Lord, this day with your message today. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, honey. Awesome. You may be seated. Someone's saying, finally, I've been standing up for all this time. Well, I do it all service. I just want to cover, let's start off with defining what vision is. Vision is a preview of what God is going to do. So vision is about the future. Uh, it also means a word from God, a promise, a prediction. Why, why promise? Because when God gives you a vision, a word, a dream, an idea, it comes with a promise. God is not teasing you. He's giving you a preview. Wouldn't it be great to know what God's plan is for your life? Because if you would know that, life would not freak you out because you would know I'm here, but I know where I'm going. The scariest thing in life, and I think all of us, is not knowing at all what the future holds. And if you don't know what the future holds, life, challenges, obstacles will overwhelm you because they'll make you and convince you, they'll make you think and convince you that where you're at now is where you're always going to be. This is your destiny. Nothing will ever change. But God did not create you to live a life with no purpose, no sense of direction. He never intended for you to live a life with no aim and no passion. God created you to live a life of passion. Let me give you a scripture here and let's see what the Bible says. Isaiah 48, 3 says this. Long ago, I told you what was going to happen. Then suddenly I took action and all my predictions came true. What God is saying in the scripture, I showed you what was going to happen. Then I took action and everything I showed you before it happened came true. Because everything I will show you will come true. But there's a pattern in this scripture. God reveals it, God shows it, then he does it. So without new vision, nothing new will happen in your life. There's almost like a spirit that's trying to keep us blind or keep us spiritually deaf that we don't hear from God because if we don't hear from God, nothing new is going to happen in your life. I told you what was going to happen. Then I suddenly took action. I would say this, to say it another way. God, re first revelation, then manifestation. Without revelation, you'll never see anything new manifest in your life. For 2021, 2021, God has a dream, a vision for you to accomplish. This year, either you get the vision and at the end, the vision will be accomplished or you don't get any vision. You don't set any goals. And you know what 2021 will be? A waste of time. Now, time is a, a very valuable asset. You get 24 hours a day at a time, but you cannot recapture lost time. 
you can recapture lost money. If you lose money, you could always get it back. But time, you can never get back. There's going to be a day that you breathe your final breath. And I pray that you don't live your whole life not even knowing what you were here to do. The enemy is doing everything he can. And I say, enemy, there's a real devil that has a real system to get you trapped, to get you offended, to make you angry, to keep you abused, to keep you addicted, to keep you lost, to keep you in that condition your whole life. You were not created to be angry. That's a vision to be angry, a vision of revenge your whole life. That's what's going to be your defining moment. Someone hurts you and you'll never forgive them. That's not life. You're trapped. You were never meant to self-medicate yourself with whatever addiction or bad habit that you have. Those things are lying deceptions, lying definitions of who you are. Crazy thing that we start confessing these false identities over our lives. I'm a drug addict for the rest of my life. I'm angry. I'm depressed. I'm full of anxiety. I'm this, I'm that. These are definitions, but this has nothing to do with your purpose. It's time for you to shake all that stuff off and say, no, if God has a plan for my life and God has an identity for my life and God has a purpose for my life, I want that to, be, to start right now. I showed you what was going to happen. And all my predictions came true. And I love what it says. I showed you what was going to happen. And suddenly I took action. This scripture is saying, until I show it to you, I won't even act on it. We see that pattern in the Bible. You know Mary in the Bible, the mother of Jesus in the Bible. Before she was born, God already, that was part of the plan. This was not a lotto pick. They didn't put the, all the names in a ro rotating little thing and then pull out a name. Mary, you're the lucky one to be Jesus' mother. Before she was born, there was a purpose. An angel came to her and gave her a vision. You will be the mother of Jesus Christ. And after she received that word and it was revealed, she got the vision, then the Holy Spirit acted and she became pregnant with the Savior of the world. This is what God is saying. I want to give you vision. And I want, to, I want to give you a seed of greatness in you. Don't get intimidated what God's ready to tell you. Because what God's ready to tell you is greater than your past experience. Is greater than your education. Is greater than your ability. Is greater than your power. You're going to have to depend on God's power to carry out or fulfill or accomplish a God vision. You guys get that? Today's vision school. And what I'm ready to show you is so powerful. If you learn this skill of getting vision, setting goals, and accomplishing them, you'll be a major asset everywhere you go. Most people are so short-sighted, all they could recognize or all they could acknowledge is what it is. They can't acknowledge what it could be. We need some people to get some vision. My family's here, but it could be a lot better. We are here, but there, the future looks a lot better than it is now. It's vision from God. We need some visionary leaders. I remember that there was a day that we, God gave me a vision to reach our inner city children. And why inner city children? Because right now, gangs are discipling our little boys and little girls in the neighborhood. Drug dealers are discipling our little boys and little girls in the neighborhood. Pimps are right now in our neighborhoods, in our tough areas. Pimps are right now discipling our little girls and telling them that they're hood rats. Your, your, what your purpose is, is for guys to sleep with you, will collect money. That's your value to us. That's happening every single day in the neighborhood. And we as a church have a vision that God's given us to reach them. 
Because if we do nothing, nothing's going to change in the neighborhood. We don't like the violence that's coming out of the neighborhood, the drug addiction, the pain, the murders, the crime. We don't like none of it. But the question is, who has the vision to bring about change, restoration, love, and bring these children into a family? So we had a vision. And I remember me and Pastor Robert were talking about it. I go, Robert, I think we could do this. Why don't we start a bus ministry and go into the toughest neighborhoods we could find and bring those little boys and little girls, get them on that bus and bring them to church. Give them a break from the hood. Give them a break from the darkness. Give them a break from the pain. Give them a break from the sexual abuse and bring them to the house of God and love them and speak into them and introduce them to Jesus and introduce them to, to love and a family. Now, this was a problem. At that time, we had no money for buses. I didn't know where to get a bus. We didn't have one bus. But I believe this was, it was a big ministry. And this would happen while we were talking about it. While we were talking about this bus ministry, a local church called us up and they said, um, we were in our staff meeting and we are now getting rid of all of our buses. And I don't know, your name came up. Do you want buses? I never talked to anybody about buses. This, I thought it was a secret conversation. And God says, it really wasn't a secret conversation because I first gave it to you and I was going to make it happen. I just needed to make sure you received the vision, spoke the vision, believed for the vision, and I was going to suddenly start acting. <laughs> so they called us and I thought, they're going to want us to buy these buses. We have no money. We just barely started this church. The majority of the people that were coming to our church were homeless from the neighborhood. And I said, how can we buy those buses? So I went down there and I went to go look at the buses. And I thought, I thought he thought that we had money and they were going to sell us the buses they want to get rid of. So I went right in the meeting and I'm talking to their chief financial officer. I go, look, I don't know what you guys are planning to do here, but we don't have any money to buy any buses. So you know that, right? He goes, I didn't ask you if you had any money. I go, all right then. Just go look at the buses. So we looked at the buses, and they had a fleet, I would say, maybe 12 buses. He goes, which one do you want? Which ones do you want? And I go, well, I was just brave. All of them. <laughs> he goes, you have all of them. And that moment, they signed over 12 pink slips for 12 buses. And now we had a fleet of buses that were in our parking lot that we could go out there and pick up little boys and little girls. That It was like two weeks later, we had buses, like big, like Greyhound buses, picking up little boys and little girls in the neighborhood. And it all started with just receiving a vision from God. Think about it. Maybe the only thing that's missing is you don't know what God is saying about your life. And maybe you don't know what God is saying about your life is because you haven't exposed yourself enough to conversations like this. Or maybe you're so wrapped up in your problems, you're so wrapped up in the news, you're so wrapped up with daily agendas, you're so wrapped up in your to-do list your YouTube, your Instagram, your all the other stuff that we got going on, your Netflix, your movies, that you have no time, your sports, that you have no time to hear from God about your future. Just think about that. We need, why are we fasted for 21 days? If you're here for the first time, we are fasted for 21 days. You know what we're saying? We're getting rid of all distractions because this is what we want to do. We want to hear from God. God. I'm going to give you three easy steps on how to accomplish a vision for your life. A God vision for your life. You're right now sitting in a God vision. This was a warehouse, but before it was a church, before thousands of people came, you know what it was? A warehouse. It wasn't a church. We needed to get a vision from God that God wanted this location to be a church, and then God would suddenly act and put everything in place for this to be a church. 
And all of it was created. Why? Because God had a vision to meet you and have a relationship with you. I would say this, millions of dollars have been sent and you're worth it. A sacrifice have been made and you're definitely worth it. All this for you. Thank God, God has a vision. So three easy steps to accomplish a vision. Number one, very simple, get a vision. Vision answers the question, it answers the question, what are my goals this year? Where am I headed? What am I believing for? What areas am I going to put effort and work in? What is my aim? What is my target? If you can't answer that question now, this year, before we get out of January, Let's get some answers to those questions. I'm going to show you how to get some of those answers to that question. But we need vision. I have good news for you. God wants to give us and give you brand new vision. Brand new vision. Let's look at Isaiah 48, 6. Great scripture. You have heard, this is God speaking. You have heard my predictions and seen them fulfilled. What's, uh, what's a vision? It's a promise. It's a prediction from God. He goes, every time I show you something, this is what happens. Fulfilled, 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 fulfilled. You've seen that happen. You've seen that. You've seen the pattern, but you refuse to admit it. Now, look, now I will tell you new things, secrets you have not heard. They are brand new, not things from the past. So you can't say, we knew that all the time. If you're ever going to see something new in your life, you're going to have to get new vision. And he's saying, the vision I'm going to give you has nothing to do with your past. You know what he's saying is? It has nothing to do with your ability, with your experience, with your education, with what I've done before, what I'm ready to do is so brand new, you could only get it done through me. You're going to feel totally inadequate when I give you the vision because you're going to look at your past experience and you're going to know, I can't do that. I've never done that. And God is saying, exactly. That's why you're going to have to depend on me. And at the end of the year, you're going to be able to say this, God did that through me. You're not going to say, I did it. You're going to say, God did that through me. And you're going to tell others, can you believe that? And they're going to say, no, that's a miracle. Are you ready to step into miracle territory? Are you ready to step into greatness this year? Are you ready to let God use you to blow people's minds that they never thought they discounted you and God says, you discounted them, but I counted them in. <laughs> See God for some vision. God wants to show us brand new things, things that have never been done. God is ready to do them through you and I. I think that's some good news. How many believe that's some good news? Now, don't let, as we're talking about get a vision, don't let past failures and present circumstances talk you out of God's vision for your life. If God reveals it, he will help you do it. Look at Ephesians 3.20. Look what the scripture says. Now to him who is able. Who's able? Who's able? Him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare to ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams according to his power. That is at work within us. He said, when I give you a dream and a vision, you're going to depend on my power to get it done. You know, I think we're underestimating the power of God working through us. God could use anyone that just allows themselves 
to tune in to God and say, God, lead my life. Show me what is going to happen. Give me a preview of my future. Does anybody want a preview of their future? God is saying, I'm going to show you brand new things. And I'm going to do it according to my power working in you. That is so powerful. God chose just regular people, these 12 disciples. And if you look at the 12 disciples that he chose, um, one of them betrayed him. All 11 of them turned their backs on him. And these very people that turn their backs on him, he resurrects from the dead, has one more meeting with them. And what he says, my vision for you has not changed. You might have messed up. You might have failed. But I still am going to do a great work through you. She says, the vision is go out there and transform the whole world. We were running and now you're giving us a worldwide vision? He goes, yep, I'm going to do it through you. Are you guys ready for God to do something great through you? Someone say, get a vision. Our church vision for 2021, I'll give you some of the stuff. We're going to reach 3,000 new families. We're going to launch out a church in Pomona. You know, we just went down there yesterday. Pomona, we had our Dr. Block team in the hood. This is what we do. We talk to the police department when we go into a neighborhood and we're going to a city and we say, what's the most dangerous neighborhood that you have? Where are you getting all your calls from? And they gave us the address. And they thought we were asking so we wouldn't go there. We were asking so we would go there. So we showed up in a tough area this week, and, or Saturday, yesterday, and one of the ladies said, hey, do you know what neighborhood you're in? And they go, we know. They said, but don't come here at night. You come here at night, there's a lot of people getting shot, stabbed, crime, criminal activity, prostitution. And, and then, you know, it was actually Pastor Rob knocked on the door. Pastor Rob goes, no, we're coming at night. Because we have a vision, and we have a ministry already started, and, and, and it's called Light Up the Night. We're not a ministry that's running from danger. We're running to danger to help some people get out of danger. That's what we do. That's called vision. So what is light up the night? We're going to go in there. We're going to bring up. We're going to bring. This is what we're going to do. We're gonna, we're gonna, we got to get this. We're going to get a truck that you could just drop down a stage in any hood at any time. Just boom, drive by Jesus. And then get. And all of a sudden out of the truck, our worship team comes out. Boom, 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 boom. And all of a sudden, a preacher comes out. Hey! Ah, no. <laughs> this is what we're doing in 2021. This is not a dream. This is not a wish. Come on, this is an assignment from heaven. And God is looking for a team that's willing to say, yes, we're ready to go where the danger's at. You know, you have to be willing to die for this stuff. We got to get rid of all sissy Christianity. How are you going to do a great work if you're scared of every little devil that's around the corner? You got to wake up and realize that God is with you when he gives you a vision. Come on, he, you can face whatever giant and you can take him out because it's God's vision. It's God's power that's working through little old you. So number two, I, I, I got vision. I got a whole bunch of vision. I, I, I'll read another one. We're, we're, we want to get our youth ministry to 500 strong. We want to build, we want to create a study hall for our children and youth. Right, I was talking to Robert. There's 50,000 kids that right now in our school district that are not even right now checking in for school all year long. The school district called us up this week and we got to talk to them and they want us to help fill that gap. I thank God they're realizing that we need to partner up with God on this thing and we need a breakthrough. Why? Because we're bold enough to go knock on their door and say, hey, little Johnny, where you been? And we're not just going to see where he's at. We're going to have a study hall. We're going to have some mentorship. We're going to love him. We're going to start a sports program. We're going to start a sports program in the hood. Starting this year, our goal this year, sports for the children, study hall here. We are going to make a difference. How does great vision like that happen? How do things come onto the scene that have never been there? Someone gets a vision. 
and says yes. Aren't you glad you're part of a church that's saying yes? Number two, create a plan of action. So number one, get a vision. And number two, create a plan of action. Creating a plan of action answers this question. What are the steps I need to take to see the vision come to pass? Or what is the deadline to accomplish these steps? How will I get it done? Who do I need, who do I need to help me get it done? Who do I know that has already accomplished these goals that can give me insight and mentoring? What do I need to do to prepare myself to achieve the goal? So these are questions that set in a plan will answer. How God sets this up, that with every vision, God gives a plan of action. With every vision and every building that's built, there's blueprints. Without the blueprints, there's no building. I have an idea. You draw it out on paper. That's fine. Where are the blueprints? So when God gives you a vision, he also gives you a plan of actions, which are the steps that need to be taken for that vision to be accomplished. Get the vision and get the download of the plan. Let's look at Nehemiah 2.11. Nehemiah was a man that he had a, a vision of rebuilding a city that was in utter ruins or in ruins for like a hundred years. The city was in ruins, their walls were all tor torn down. And we say walls torn down because back in the day, the strength of the city was based on the strength of the walls. Once the walls of the city would come down, then the enemy would be able to go in, rape and pillage the people to no end. They would get a harvest that they worked so hard for. The surrounding enemies would say, they're an easy prey. Go in there and rip them off. Their young girls were actually taken as slaves and they would be sexually abused and raped. They were living in poverty and constant fear of the enemy coming because they had no protection. But there was a man that had a vision, just one man. He never, ever participated in construction. He never did a building project, but he had a vision from God. If no one rescues them, if no one goes in, they remain, they remain abused, they remain in poverty, they remain lost, they remain, oh, you say, going to hell? Someone has to be willing to fill the gap and be a champion. So Nehemiah says, I'll be the champion, Lord. If you could use anybody, give me the vision. I'll run with it. So he runs with it. So God gives him a vision. So now he's moving towards Jerusalem, the city that needs to be rebuilt. But look at what he says. And, and Nehemiah 2.11 says, So I arrived in Jerusalem three days later. I slipped out during the night, taking only a few others with me. I had not told anyone about the plans God had put in my heart for Jerusalem. What's it? I have not told anybody about the plans God put in my heart. God not only gives you vision, but he'll make you smart enough. He'll give you steps to accomplish the vision. God not only has a vision that he wants to implant in your heart, he wants to get a plan of action in your heart as well. You might not know how to do it, but God sure knows how to do it. Of course, it takes time. Time for what? Time aside to hear from God. Time aside to write out vision. Write out a plan of action. You know what it's called? A business plan. Do you know that the banks have certain dollars set aside to launch out new businesses? But they will not give you a dollar until they see the business plan. And they know this. If the business plan is clear, 
If the business plan has been thought out and they look at it, they go, of course this will succeed. If you carry this out, you will definitely be profitable. This is the question I have for you. Are you putting any effort getting a vision for your life or a plan for your life? You have a birthday party and you make a list of all the people that are coming. Then you get a to-do list. We got to get the party favors. We got to get the cake. We got to get, we got to get the taco man coming out. We got to get the DJ. And you go through the list to have an amazing party. But could it be that you're putting more effort in a birthday party than you're putting in designing your whole life? Where there's no vision, people perish. You know what that means? They quit. They give up. They backslide. They don't progress. They die out. People that backslide, they start off the year strong and then they backslide. You know why they backslide? They had no vision. You guys get that? So I'm going to give you a practical way. Let, let, let's look at it. So he says, um, he told no one the plans, they put in heart. But I'm going to give you a practical way to set goals. Someone say set goals. Very simple, practical thing I'm going to show you. And it's called, practice the seven by seven setting goals technique. This is what I want you to do. I, I believe, you, no, I know everybody could do this. Write down seven goals you want to accomplish this year. I'm going to frame it. What if all seven that you wrote, God will make sure happens in your life? And what if what's not written down will not happen? God is saying, if you don't get the vision, it won't happen. Nothing new will happen in your life until you get some vision up for 2021. Each one of us, if we wrote down seven things we want to see done in 2021, you got a really good chance for those seven things to come to pass. The other thing, seven by seven, each one of the goals, write down seven steps to accomplish the goals. So you'd have 49 action steps. I'm going to give you an example. Goal number one. Let's say your goal number one. I want to grow spiritually this year. So now you write down seven steps, seven things you can do to become more spiritual. I'll give them to you. One could be, I will start off the year with a 21-day fast and tune in to our daily devotionals. Do you know right now, every day we've created a video for you to sit down and watch, 10-minute video. So 21-day fast, we're also giving you some spiritual food. You grow. Number two thing I could do, I will read one chapter of the Bible every day and take notes on what I've learned. Number three, I will start and complete the growth track this year. Starting at the way, uh, uh, prospering at the way, freedom at the way, leading at the way. Have you started? That's one of the ways you could grow. Number four, I will attend all impartation services and all Sunday services this year. It's a commitment to your brain. These are steps I can make. What's impartation service? On the 27th of January, uh, we're going to start three-day, really four-day revival. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to open up the first night. This place is going to be electric. Don't miss it. It's going to be an impartation of vision and words from God. Vision is a word from God. You're going to get a word from God for 2021. Um, Thursday night, we got Bishop Bronner. He's one of the smartest guys I've ever met in my life. He's an amazing communicator. He's been teaching all the biggest churches. He has a huge church in, in Texas, and, and he's a multi-millionaire. They have this multi-millionaire. They have this big business. He has one of his products in Walmart, which ended up being, they, they sell one of his products for his business that he sells in Walmart, Walmart, and it ended up being the biggest 
sale, I mean, biggest item that's sold in all of, the, all of Walmart. There's not a product that's sold more than his product. He's going to be here Thursday with some wisdom. He's going to come with a word of God. You don't want to miss it. Impartation of great things. They're doing great things. Then Friday, we have Pastor Obed from Cathedral City. He's hanging around with all the top leaders of uh, Christian leaders in the United States. And, and I talked to him once in a while. He goes, man, I've heard this. I heard that. He's going to be here. And then um, Sunday morning, we got um, Dr. Dave Martin. He's like a business coach. He's an amazing communicator. He's going to be here Sunday morning. All I'm saying is, if God is giving out word, if God is giving out vision, don't you miss one of those services. It's time for you to get a word for God preparing you for 2021. Let's do our part. And it goes on to say, um, I will join a P12 um, discipleship group. Six, I will sign up and serve in a ministry this year. I will give my first fruit offering and tithe off all my increases this year. These are just some of the steps I can take to grow spiritually. And whatever goal you have, write down seven things and seven steps to get there. Now, if you don't, I want you guys, if you don't have the discipline to write it, you don't have the faith to receive it. See, we want everything free with no investment. You're never gonna get great results in any area you're not committed to put some work in. Work on your future so the enemy can't just come and lie to you about your life. Because once you know about your future and you know where you're headed, the devil just can't lie to you anymore. You're not going to fall for just anything because you know where you're headed. I'm going to give you an example of that. I'm going to end with the last point. I, my mom told me, Marco, you're going to be a pastor. That's what God has called you to do. She would tell me over and over, when you were in my womb, in my stomach, I dedicated you to the Lord. You're going to serve God every day of your life. And at the end, you're going to be a pastor. You are a pastor. That's what you've been called to do. So, of course... So someone asked, what are you going to do? Well, at the beginning, when I was a kid, I said, I want to become a professional baseball player. But then I realized I wasn't good enough. I got cut from the high school baseball team, much less make it to the pros. <laughs> but this is what happened. I remember my, my senior year, there was a really pretty girl in our school. She's one of the head cheerleaders in the school. And, and I was looking at her in biology class. And she was on, she was like on a fork. I was on the one corner. She was on a, on the far corner over there. And I, and I, I was trying to get eye contact with her, but I, I, I didn't know what to do if I did make eye contact with her. So I just referred to movies and I just winked at her. <laughs> at the end of semester, they did something that the, the biology teacher said, why don't we switch seats? So I stayed in my seat. I didn't want to switch seats. She switched seats and she went and sat right next to me. The wink worked. <laughs> but as I was talking to her, I could realize that she was on a different wavelength than me. I could tell that the conversation was going lewd and lustful. And it was, it was really quick. She invited me over her house and she said, my parents aren't there. They're gone for a whole weekend. You could come over and we could just have some fun. And I knew what fun meant. <laughs> but what kept me from the fun was vision. What kept me from the fun and disciplined me to stay on track was that I was called to be a pastor. And if I'm called to be a pastor... I'm not called to do that. That has nothing to do with my future. So it, give me, it gave me the power to say no to the sin, no to the lust, no to the sex out of marriage, to say yes to a God and yes to a purpose and yes to a future. And I would even say this, yes to you. That's what vision will do. It'll cause you to have some self-control, some self-discipline because you're preparing for something. Okay, so the last step of, of accomplishing a vision. One is get a vision. Number two is create a plan of action. Get that from God. 
practice the seven by seven technique. And then number three, very easy, take action. Say it with me, take action. See, good planning and hard work always lead to prosperity. Every person God uses to do great things does all he can and trust God to do what he can. Miracles happen when vision, a good plan, and hard work are involved. All three ingredients create success. Let's read the scripture, Proverbs 21.5. It says, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. Good planning and hard work. Not bad plans, really good plans. And hard work lead to prosperity, lead to abundance, profit, success, gain. But shortcuts lead to poverty or need, lack, or want. Now, there are no shortcuts. If you want to do great things, you're going to have to put some hard work in. If you want to accomplish what you've never accomplished, you're literally going to have to do everything that you can and then God will do the rest. The formula for success is very simple. You set goals and, you, and plus daily actions equal to accomplishment or equal success. So get a vision from God. Spend some time hearing. God wants to tell you what is going to happen. I already know what's going to happen. We're going to start a church in Pomona this year. I know what's going to happen. I know this, that we're going to launch out one more campus here in San Bernardino this year. So we're going to have one church and three locations in San Bernardino at the end of this year. I know this, that we're going to open up our food distribution warehouse and we're going to have freezers in there that we're going to give out better food than we've ever given out. I know that. I know this, that we're going to open up a home for foster girls that are transitioning out of the foster system this year. I already know that. I know we're going to reach 3,000 families. I know we're going to baptize 2,000 people this year. I know 6,000 people are going to give their lives to Jesus. I know where we're headed as a church because I've got a download of what's coming. And God has a download for you. I'll say this. Hang out with us. We're going places. You're going places. And we're going to do this together. Stop focusing on your past because your past has nothing to do with where God is taking you. Well, I got a record. God says, forget about records. I, I can overcome all that stuff. You just follow me. I'll take you places. All they, they just know I got bad reputation. Don't worry about it. I'll use your bad reputation to do some great things. They won't, they won't even going to know what hit them because you're going to be like a secret agent. They're not even going to expect a uh, move of God through you. I'm going to use you. Are you guys ready to get some vision from God? So, they, so let's do what God has called us to do and let God do the rest. Pastor Robert, can you close us out? Let's give the Lord one more big hand if you receive from God something from God. Thank you. Hey, man, what a great word. Let's all stand up, you guys. And before we dismiss today, what, wasn't that a great word, you guys? Great words. These are the type of messages and teachings. You want to hear it again. You want to go on the app. And don't forget, on the app, you guys, you have the notes right there. You have the notes. During service, while pastor is teaching, there's actually fill in the blanks right there. Tonight, we'll have the answers. Tomorrow, you could go on the app and download. You have all the notes right there to review it and then start to apply it. It's so good to see everybody here today, man. Got a packed out house today. This is wonderful. Before we end today, let's make sure, before we end, everybody's attention up here. Before we end, let's make sure that everyone is on their way to heaven. This is the biggest vision of all. We have to make sure. We have a few minutes. The word is important. The worship is important. And now is one of the most important times of the service where you have an opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus, to get saved. This week has been tough. People that have passed away. We had two of our members pass away. Another one of Veronica's friend, her, the organization that she works out, one of the person died there just just a crazy, crazy, heavy week, heavy, 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 heavy 
As far as people passing, when I got the call from Michelle, man, it broke me. They're actually doing a tribute today at our downtown campus, Pastor Joe. They're doing a whole tribute for Michelle today at our Arrowhead campus. And we'll let you know about the funeral services for Michelle and Pastor John. And I look at all these people that have passed, and thank God, Michelle, she knew Jesus Christ. In heaven, we're going to see her again. Done. In heaven, we're going to see her again. But friends and family, you guys, there's a real heaven and there's a real hell. Not everybody goes to heaven. It's only those who put their faith in Jesus. So I'm going to ask you a question. If you died today and you took your last breath, are you on your way to heaven? Have you put your faith in God? Not a religion, not a church, has nothing to do with this. It's a relationship with Jesus. Have you surrendered your life to him? Because friends and family, look at all the people that have passed. And I'm talking to you guys. You guys have family members. You guys have coworkers right now that are in critical condition with COVID or sick, all kinds of things. It proves to us again, tomorrow is not promised. The next 30 minutes is not promised to you and I. The next 24 hours, it's not promised to us. Each and every one of us have an appointed day to die. We have a birth date. Pretty soon right now you're going to have a salvation date. And then after that, we have a day where we pass on to eternity. So here it goes. If you're saying, Pastor, I need God. I want to be forgiven of all my sins. I want to make sure, and you're watching this online right now. I want to make sure that I'm saved. I want to make sure if I die today that I would go straight to heaven. Pastor, how do I get to heaven? It's real simple. All you have to do is put your faith in God. That's it. The Bible says in Romans 10, we confess Jesus as Lord. You confess Jesus as Lord. You are saved. So here it goes. You're in this room. You're online watching us right now. You're saying, Pastor, I want God. Man, I want to make sure if I die today, I'm going straight to heaven. I want Jesus to forgive me of all of my sins today. Or maybe you need to come back to God. Maybe you've been running and you're saying, man, I need to rededicate. I need to get right with God. Today I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. If that is you, I'm going to count to three. Soon as I say that number three, I'm going to say one, two, three. As soon as I say that three, you're going to raise your hand and say, that's me. I want Jesus. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to make sure if I die today that I would go straight to heaven. That's me. When I count to three, here it goes. One. You're online right now. You're going to stand up maybe in your living room. Get ready to raise your hands even online. Here it goes. When I say three. One, two, three. Three, raise your hands right now. Say, so that's me. I want God. I see a couple hands over here. I see a hand way over there in the back. I see a hand right there. I see a hand. Yeah, can you keep your hands up just for a few seconds? Yeah, see that hand? Anybody on this side if I missed anyone? See a hand way in the back. I see you. All those that just raised your hands. I see some hands over here off to my left over here. All those hands just raised. I want you to come down. Come meet me here in the front. And we're going to lead you right now in a prayer to give your life. And to surrender your life. Even if you didn't raise your hand, you're saying, man, I need God. I need forgiveness. Come. Come on down. This is your day. Come, come, come. Yes, you're online right now. Maybe you're at home. Just stand up for a second. And now I want us to do this. We got a few more people coming down. I want us to do this. I want you to take 20 or 30 seconds. I want you to ask the person you're standing next to. I want you to ask him this. Yeah, come on down. Come on down. I want you to ask him or her this. You're standing next to him. You're sitting there. Say, if you die today, do you know where you would spend eternity? I want you to turn around, ask the person next to you. Say, man, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. You can say, come on. I'll go down there with you. I'll support you at your walk with Christ. Take 20 seconds. Ask the person next to you. Say, hey, if you die today. Where are you going? Do you know where you're spending eternity? Take 20 seconds. There you go. Yeah, there you go. He said, man, I don't know. Anyone else? This is a time of service. We don't rush. We let God just speak to people. And there might be a few more. Any more? Yes. Proud of you. Good job, man. Proud of you. 
Anybody else over here? All right. That's it right there. We have, we got, let me count. We got one, we got two, we got three, we got four, we got five, we got six, we got seven, we got eight, we got nine, we got ten, we got eleven. Give a round of applause. Eleven people right here. Maybe you're watching this online right now. Maybe there's some more online. Yes. I want everyone to bow their head and close their eyes. We got three more coming up. Two more. We got three more coming up. Give them a round of applause. Three more over here coming up. Good job. Good job. I want everyone to bow their head and close their eyes. This is your day. Maybe you didn't come down. You said, man, I should have went down there. What am I doing at my seat? It's okay. Just say the prayer right there where you're at. You're going to get saved right there. You're online. Join in this prayer with us wherever you're at. Join in. Every head bow, every eyes close. You say, man, I need God. I want God to save me. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness. I repent of all my sins, all the wrong that I've done. Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for me. Today, I put my faith in you. Today, I am saved. I am born again on my way to heaven. Holy Spirit, fill me so I can live for God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Give all those a round of applause that came up. All those online, congratulations. Go to igotsaved.com. All those up here in the front, just hang out for a couple of minutes. We're going to pray with you guys, and we're going to get you to your next step starting at the way. You guys, Wednesday night, we'll be back online Wednesday night. Join the watch parties. Invite some friends, some family to watch the services online. We love you guys. We'll see you back Wednesday. If you need prayer, if anybody needs prayer, come on down. We'd love to pray with you guys. If you need anything at all, just come. And if God is for you, who could come against you? Have an awesome day. Welcome back, Wave family. What a powerful message. What a powerful service. And if you said that prayer, make sure you go to igotsaved.com. Welcome to the family. We want you to get started on your next step, which could be our growth track. Yes. And we have some amazing classes in our growth track. Vanessa, what are those classes? We have Starting at the Way, we have Prospering at the Way, then we have Freedom at the Way. All three classes are excellent. So definitely, if you just made that decision to give your life to Christ, sign up for the growth track classes so you can just, you know, just start your walk with Christ and, and know what it's really about. Absolutely. You definitely want to get on that track, especially because we're starting a new year. Why not do something new or start something new in this case, which is one of the five things that we're supposed to do this year, start something new. So get started on that growth track and sign up for those classes today. Yes, yes. So, John, I just want to share really quickly. I love the, um, the instruction Pastor gave us today on yeah. how to set goals because I've said this before, setting goals is not my expertise. <laughs> it's so not I your love, forte. <laughs> it isn't. <laughs> but he said seven by seven. So it's simple. Get seven, write down seven goals and then seven action steps. If we want to, to grow, we're going to have to take action. And um, growth comes with just those daily actions. It that's right. And that's right. And, and, and a lot of times, Vanessa, we forget that growth is not on accidents. It's right. intentional. A lot of people that are growing or moving in the right direction have made intentional steps in order to do so. Right. And that's what we're doing this year by starting new things, getting involved in our growth track, getting involved in something new as far as maybe a different ministry or leadership university, which is going on right now. But it's all intentional. And if yes. you intentionally write it down, God will do the rest. Right. So that's for this. That's it for this Sunday. We found we love you guys. We're so glad that you tuned in. We pray that you have an amazing day. But until then, we will see you on Wednesday. Love you all. God bless.